Democrats have total control of government in New York State, so naturally they say Saturday's Hanukkah stabbing attack was the fault of President Trump. The president has a Jewish son-in-law. He speaks well of Jewish Americans constantly. He moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. But according to Bill de Blasio, it's his hateful speech that caused this attack. It's not a time for a partisan discussion, but it is a time to say uh, some of the most hateful speeches emanating from Washington, D.C. And what we need our president to do uh, is be a unifier, uh, a calming, positive voice reminding of us of what we have in common as Americans. That's what presidents, both Democrat and Republican, have done for generations. We've missed that. Uh, and, and the hateful speech, even if it's uh, not inciting specific violence, let's face it, we have seen these violent forces emboldened. Yeah, that doesn't really play here, I don't think. Governor Andrew Cuomo, who spent his tenure in office demonizing pro-lifers and supporters of the Second Amendment, took the same point of view. What can anyone make of uh, President Trump's tweets? This is how he, uh, he, he plays to his partisan base, by demonizing Democrats. Uh, Democrats are evil. Democrats are bad. Democrats have lost their mind. They're anti-American. You foment that hate. And then you're shocked when you see these episodes of hate all across the country. While we're uh, fermenting, uh, Rashida Tlaib, who once blamed uh, white people for an attack committed by black Israelites, so-called, uh, also decided to weigh in against the president. Quote, folks still don't see the connection with his words and how it ignites violence. He fuels people's anger and misguided hate. Instead of leading with compassion, he simply gaslights and laughs about it. Uh, DeRoy Murdoch is a contributing editor to uh, National Review. And uh, DeRoy, this, uh, this white supremacism is really rampaging out of control in the New York area. It is interesting when you look at the people involved in these recent attacks mm. we've seen, which are horrible, and I hope that mm. they, we've seen the last of them. Uh, it would be more plausible that President Trump is appealing to white uh, supremacists until you actually look at the people who engaged in these mm. sorts of things. Mm. We had a woman named Tiffany Harris who allegedly went up to three uh, Jewish women, slapped them across the, st across the face, and said, F you Jews. Yeah. She happens to be black. Uh, then we have uh, Grafton Thomas, who's the suspect in the Hanukkah attack we've just dis yeah. uh, discussed earlier at the Machete. He also happens to be black. And then we had that awful attack in, in Jersey City where he had some people go into a kosher market and shoot up uh, that uh, facility and kill a bunch of people. And th those people are named David Anderson and Francine Graham, uh. and they were black as well. So it, uh, it's very odd that you don't see the white supremacy sort of tied in the actual suspects in these anti-Semitic attacks. Get real, DeRoy. Their MAGA hats uh, fell off before the mugshots. That that's must, obvious, that that's must be what's what. happened. Listen, <clears throat> it, it's actually quite disgraceful, I think, what's happening here, and that for example, with the Jersey City attack, basically the media were interested in that when they thought it was some MAGA guy going nuts on Jews. The minute they found out it wasn't quite so helpful to the narrative, they just 86 the whole uh, thing. The whole thing sort of fell into George Orwell's memory hole, mm. just disappeared. And if it weren't for this particular attack, we wouldn't probably be talking about the Jersey City attack. And, and the media are very, very good at not covering the numerous examples of President Trump speaking out against anti-Semitism. You remember that attack at that synagogue yeah. in Poway, California, near San yeah. Diego. He invited Rabbi Israel Goldstein to the Rose Garden, hugged him in public, yeah. asked him to get up and say a few words. And before he did that, President Trump said, we will fight with all of our strength and everything that we have in our bodies to defeat anti-Semitism, to end the attacks on Jewish people and to conquer all forms of persecution, intolerance and hate. And Rabbi Goldstein responded, I'd like to thank our dear honorable Mr. President for being, as they say in Yiddish, a mensch par excellence. Right. Guess how much coverage that got on ABC, CBS, and NBC night, uh, evening news programs? Zero. Zero. So if you're a Jew who's trembling about anti-Semitism, you're a, a friendly uh, a Gentile who's uh, pro-Jewish, and you're disturbed about this, the words of comfort from the President of the United States saying, be comforted, we love you, and also don't be an anti-Semite, that's a bad thing, those messages don't get out. All of this cover-up by the media basically play into the hands of white supremacists. Yeah, ba uh, and actually, uh, there was a fascinating series of tweets by Erin Bieber, who uh, is a 
fact checker of all things at NBC News, who, who says that this is all very, quote, complicated uh, relations between the two communities, between uh, blacks and Jews are complicated. And uh, basically, if, if, if you guys would just put down the machetes, we could all get back to hating Trump <laughs> as one united, happy <laughs> rainbow coalition. How long are people going to put up with this nonsense? It, it's just awful. And I think what the media need to do is be honest about what President Trump has done. He had a Hanukkah party, for mm. God's sake. If you're trying to foment hatred against Jews, you don't throw Hanukkah parties. If you hate Jews, you don't let your daughter become uh, an Orthodox Jew and marry an Orthodox Jew, which is uh, what she did. And, and Jared Kushner is one of his closest advisors. If he hated Jews so much, he'd say, get out of my White House. You're out of the will. You're out of my family. Goodbye. It's exactly the opposite. He doesn't leave the White House. So that Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump uh, right beside him going out to meet world leaders and engage in public policy. There, there's something actually, though, creepy and wicked about governors and mayors and congressmen misrepresent. I mean, basically, uh, de Blasio, uh, he either does this kind of mayor of Sesame Street stuff <laughs> where, oh, haters no home in our city, uh, you know, which his 12-year-old intern wrote, or we have uh, this stuff where he actually blames it on people who have nothing to do with the event. How, how long will people put up with that, Deroy? Well, I don't know. We, uh, I live in New York City, and we're sick and tired of de Blasio. He's very good at one thing, which is pointing the finger. Never at himself, but at everyone no, no. else. And he does so in this, in this case as well. He's now saying homelessness is the, the fault of uh, the President Trump as well. Oh, okay. Everything's, well, if, if, everything. if, there were, if there were a sudden shortage of Hanukkah candles in, in this country, that would be yeah, President yeah, Trump's no, that's, fault, too. That's him. He's going around stealing them all from all the menorahs. Uh, thank you uh, thank for you, that. Mark.